there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Betsy, and I got a side ponytail. Today, I want to talk about pruning your cane begonia to create a fuller and more bushy plant. And I'm going to repot my begonia for the very first time since I purchased it. Usually, begonias have a really small root system. So, in, in the case of my begonia, it's 60 centimeters high from root to, to tip, but the pot is only 10 centimeters high and 10 centimeters in diameter. So it's a really tiny pot compared to the growth above, and that's really necessary for begonias because the root system is really small and the growth on top can be really misleading. You would imagine that it requires a really big pot because it's such a big, magnificent, beautiful beast. You're gonna need some potting soil. You're gonna need a new pot, and you will notice this one is really not much larger than the previous pot. A little bit taller, a little bit more slim on the bottom, not like me. You're also going to need a glass of wine because you've spent a lot of time taking care of this plant and making sure that it grows really well and it has gotten you a lot of subscribers on Instagram and you're really scared of chopping it to bits. There are some plants that really benefit from pruning. It helps to create a bushier and more full look rather than kind of a long and spindly look. It's called pinching when you take off the very top of the growth tip where the newest growth is occurring and you, you pinch it off down to the, the topmost node. I'll show you what that looks like close and personal because before I started filming here at my table, I filmed some close-ups of how this is done. Movie magic. So we've known since like the 1930s or something, which is not that long ago, that the growing tips of plants, the very top, the area where the most growth is coming out, contains the hormone auxin. Doesn't matter what it's called. It basically transports the hormone downward in the stem and prohibits any branching out on the stem. It's all about growing upwards and outwards. And so by trimming off the growing tips, particularly in the dominant stem of the plant, you can encourage the plant to put more energy towards branching out and creating what we would consider fuller or more bushier growth, which is what we really like to see in our houseplants, especially a plant like this. What you want to use are the sharpest set of shears that you can get a hold of and make sure they're sterilized. Or if you're kind of lazy and broke like me, you'll just get your sharpest pair of scissors from the kitchen drawer and dip it in some isopropyl alcohol, call it a day. My cat always, always uses the litter box when I'm trying to make a YouTube video. And it's never just once. It's a, it's a revisiting situation. So she goes to the litter box, she kind of kicks around, she throws some crystal cat litter over her shoulder, rubs it under her armpits, steps out, takes a break. This is the break. Poop face. She's got poop face. So the first thing I'm gonna do before I repot this puppy is do the pruning. Here we go. I'm gonna take a look. Find. I don't want to go too far down. I mean, because I love this plant. So I'm just gonna go down to just above where another leaf. What is my cat doing? Just above another leaf and trim it off. That wasn't hard. That didn't make me feel bad inside. You can create new begonias with the cutting, so don't worry, it's okay. You're actually creating more plants. Do you have to like play with things while I'm, I mean, of all the times for you to become active? Oh, you're such a wishful. Here. Oh, sniff. Sniff everything. Have a little snifferoo. Take you on a sniff date. Smell, smells like dirt, huh? Smells like dirt. That's, that's for mommy. Okay. I'm satisfied with how much I have butchered my begonia. 
I keep my begonia canes supported with what used to be orchid supports, but I'm really bad at growing orchids and they don't bloom. So I recycled the orchid supports for my begonia. I'm better at begonias than I am at orchids. So we're just gonna pop her out. Just gotta do it, man. And make a total mess of your dining room table. Just loosen the dirt, loosen her up real good. I might run it under some water. I often do that to uh, ensure that like all of the old dirt is cleaned off of the roots without damaging them a bunch by like squeezing them with my fingers and digging around in there. Uh, so I'll show you how I do that. Here's my root ball. And it's just really difficult to like loosen up the dirt without snapping all those roots. And I find that putting it under the sink can make things a little bit easier for me. Um, some people might not like doing that. They may contest it. So first to make sure the water is tepid. A little bit of warm in there. That's great. That's fantastic. Okay. You can see the dirt loosening up. If, before you do this in your sink, you should really make sure that you have some sort of sieve in the drain so that you're not washing whatever is in your potting mix down your drain. Because I'll tell you what, whoever you live with is going to kill you. Oops. That's okay. I broke off. All right, wait, let me turn off the water for a second. This is one of my plant's oldest leaves. It looks like crap. <laughs> and I planned on removing this leaf. It's just a really old leaf. doesn't look good anymore. And I want to get rid of it. So it's okay that it fell off. There's another one on here that I'm going to do the same with. This is one of its oldest leaves. It was already pretty brown when I bought the plant. And now you can see it's just uh, turning to... So I'm going to take it off. You just have to be patient. It takes a while. Don't rip the roots. Just wait for the water to run through and rinse the old dirt away. That's good! I have all these supports in here. I'm just going to take them out. You have to be really careful because these are really delicate plants. I mean, the leaves are very easy to snap off. So maybe don't have too much wine before you do this part. Fill the dirt in here. This is a mixture of peat moss and compost that contains some fertilizer. Bunch of perlite. Okay. So, got this guy here. This guy here, trying to keep them all upright. It's quite difficult when you have many stems. Because you gotta hang on to all of them at the same time. And you only got two hands, unless you're a mutant. I'm not, I'm just weird. Okay, we're gonna give that a go. I think we're good. Now I just need to re-add the, the supports here. So I'm going to readjust the camera so that you can see what I'm doing. This is much better light now you can see what I'm doing. So this is the tallest stem at the moment. I always uh, put the support in at an angle so that it's facing the opposite direction of the way that this stem wants to go because then the opposing force is going to help it remain upright in a vertical position. I have to be careful because this little leaf here, he doesn't want me to do this. But you know what? I do what I want, okay? I do what I want. The art of staking your plant. The soil is not very <clears throat> thick. Okay, I think this should do it. And then I have these little, these, um, I don't know if you can see. I have these little hooks to attach the stem to the support. So I'm gonna try to do that. All right, that's pretty good.
there you go. Here's my current work of art. So, you have your freshly pruned, freshly repotted Begonia Maculata Whitey Eye, or any other cane begonia, really. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is take this into the shower, not with me, because I'm not a pervert, and shower it down with some tepid water, because I got some dirt on the leaves, and they're a little dusty anyway. And you always want to water a freshly potted plant to make sure that the soil kind of settles down into the pot. What do you do with all those cuttings? Well, you get yourself a little salsa de tomatillo verde glass that you're not using anymore. Put your cuttings in there. They will grow roots. I freaking promise they will grow roots. This plant is so easy to propagate. And I made four clippings, and in like one month, I will have four new plants. Doubtless, I have no doubts, it will happen. And you got some new baby begonias. You can make plants out of them, give them to your friends and family, or keep them for yourself, because you're greedy. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or questions, leave it down below. I'll get back to you. If you like this video and you want to see other videos about houseplant care, you know, um, DIY projects, experiments, things like that, anything relating to houseplants, uh, sometimes just me sitting around potting my plants and having a little chat and drinking wine, feel free to subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. You might find something you like. I just want to thank you so much for watching my channel. It means the world to me, and I hope you have a wonderful day. I will see you soon.